As everyone's dressed up, it's a Saturday night. Let's start things properly. Let's have a round of applause for the ladies. Let's have a round of applause. Yeah, let's have a round of applause for the ladies. Yeah, yeah, quite right, yeah. That's, actually, that's, that's probably enough. Looking around, some of them have made no effort. <laughs> You've not made an effort, have you? <laughs> <laughs> And so your comment there is, I haven't made much of an effort. Well, there's some cameras and some fucking lights. I don't know what you had in mind. <laughs> it's not like I come to your work and knock the sailor's cocks out of your mouth, is it? <laughs> Seems like a very weird thing from a quite a tough-looking man from Glasgow to say, Oh, you've not made much of an effort. <laughs> I thought you'd be dressed up prettier. It's a little bit prison rape coming from you, sir. <laughs> That's what it feels like. My point, there's an incredible amount of pressure on women these days to be beautiful and thin, and all I can say is, we've got some very brave girls in here this evening, really. <laughs> Terrific stuff. So there are some stunning-looking women in here this evening, and some right dogs. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> I'm joking. No one in here is stunning. Now, listen, this isn't what the show is about at all, but I was briefly going to tell you about a thing that I'm doing at the moment. It means a lot to me, and I was just going to take a moment of your time. I've started a little charity, just a little thing of my own, and it's going great, but I, I, I didn't want to put anything up on big screens or put any leaflets out or, or anything in the programme. I was just going to briefly tell you what the charity that I've set up does, and then if you want to get involved, you could just Google it. But it's not really what the evening's about. The evening's just about having a laugh, but I thought I might just... Sorry, I'm wittering on now. But you could just look it up and Google it if you want to get... <laughs> You know, I'm just saying, you know, because well, you could be proactive rather than me sort of forcing it down because people get bored of that. OK, what we do is we, we send obese children to the rainforest. <laughs> I don't mind you tittering because we're already seeing fabulous results. And if you want to be part of that, it's feedthetigers.com. <laughs> okay. Their faces light up. <laughs> Not the children, obviously, they're fucking petrified. Although it is quite ironically funny seeing them trying to run away. <laughs> He's a bit late for cardiovascular now. <laughs> you should have thought of that when you were waddling to Greg's, you fat fuck. <laughs> has anyone had this recently? Have you, has, have, has anyone made an appointment with the doctors recently? I phoned up for an appointment with my doctor and I got an appointment in three weeks' time. I thought, that's good, I'll either be better or dead. But then they gave me option B. They said, well, you can come down and see the locum doctor. It's not your doctor, it's just our doctor we've got down there. And if it's serious, you can come down and wait. So that's what I did. I went down to the doctor's surgery and I waited for like four hours. And eventually I got called into the little treatment room with the doctor. Walked in there, stunning looking doctor. I mean, properly, 10 out of 10. Absolutely gorgeous, exactly my type. I went, uh, I'm embarrassed. She said, I'm a professional, you're a grown man, just tell me what the problem is. I said, okay. I think my cock tastes funny. <laughs> I don't know if you got a test for that, <laughs> but I've had an idea. It's weird the gender stereotype in that joke, isn't it? Like the idea that when, when I say doctor, most people imagine a man. That's very odd, because we all know there's loads of female doctors, but if you're honest, when I say doctor, do you imagine a man? Yes? It's weird. And when a nurse is even worse. If I say nurse, do you imagine a woman? <laughs> Sounds like a slightly overactive imagination there. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean like a proper nurse, not like a stripper in a pub. <laughs> when I say nurse, do you imagine a woman? Yes? But we all know there's loads of male nurses. Although it's not pronounced male, you don't call them male nurses. It's actually pronounced male nurses. <laughs> not that I don't want to offend any male nurses, or indeed your boyfriends. <laughs> just nod that one in, good. Um, 
gentlemen, if you're in a long-term relationship, you'll be familiar with this conversation. It's the conversation that happens five minutes after you think you've gone to sleep. <laughs> you know the one I mean? TV's off, lights are off, books are down, everyone's washed their teeth, you're in bed, night, night, love you, love you, <laughs> night, night. <laughs> five minutes after that, just as, you're, just as you're drifting off into sleep, the most insecure voice you've ever heard in your life, out of the darkness, if we broke up, <laughs> would we still be friends? <laughs> I said, what do you mean, still? I bought my girlfriend some lingerie, it was her birthday, and she'd hinted at the stuff she wanted, so I went to, I think it was Agent Provocateur, for these fancy kind of set of pants and bra and stuff. Well, quite right. <laughs> so she was quite impressed. She opened it up on her birthday morning, she was really kind of into it, and she went, oh, these are beautiful, darling. But they're not my size. <laughs> I said, don't worry, I've had a chat with a woman in the shop, and she says, you can have an operation. I knew I had to lose some weight in the last year. It's a very sad day for any man when his girlfriend suggests he comes on his own tits. <laughs> you ever done that? Have you ever mixed up a fat person and a pregnant person? <laughs> it's embarrassing, isn't it? Especially if it's a fella. <laughs> I had a fat girl come up to me recently after a gig. Well, I say a fat girl. She was either fat or 18 months pregnant. <laughs> She was big. Bubbly, you might say. <laughs> Not with an effervescent personality that filled a room, no. Shaped like a bubble. <laughs> she was a comfort eater. I don't mean she was eating for emotional comfort. She was eating till she was comfortable to sit on. <laughs> she wasn't a size zero, she was a shape zero. <laughs> anyway, she came up to me after that. Well, she pretty much surrounded me. And she said, you're not meant to use the term fat. I said, you're not meant to eat cake for breakfast. <laughs> you're not meant to deep fry Mars bars. And gravy isn't an energy drink. <laughs> and if I can't say fat, because I wasn't using fat in a judgmental way, I was just, just purely being descriptive on stage, I was using the word fat. Apparently I can't use the word fat now. If I can't say fat, what term does she prefer? Chunky monkey wobble slob? <laughs> Fatty boom batty? Or blubber naught? <laughs> and if you're offended by any of those terms, how about a salad? <laughs> I, I tell you what, I, I'm, I'm a bit, not distressed at, but a little bit upset. But the term real woman. I used to really like the term real woman. It meant a voluptuous, fuller figured, curvy, beautiful, buxom, plump lady. You would say she's a real woman. Doesn't mean that anymore, does it? Real woman is now a euphemism for chunky monkey wobble slob. <laughs> you say she's a real woman when you mean she's a really fat woman. <laughs> she's dangerously close to being two women. <laughs> Have you ever fucked a girl so fat you think it might count as a threesome? <laughs> and I tell you when you know you were the fat lass, when you find yourself in the throes of passion thinking, is that boob or arm? I'll give it a lick, just to be sure. <laughs> a lot of people think horizontal stripes make them look fat. No. What makes you look fat? It's being fat. <laughs> the only horizontal stripes making you look fat are the ones in Viennetta, lasagna and sponge cake. I had a fat girl come up to me after a show a couple of weeks ago, a very nice girl. She said, look, I really enjoyed the jokes, but I'm a fat woman. How do you think I feel? I said, squidgy. <laughs> <laughs> Have any questions so far? Anything else you'd like to know? Yes! yes. Oh, I'm going to presume all the questions are for me. <laughs> if, that's... if I'm not being too starry and arrogant. <laughs> Although there's something about my name in this town. Jimmy! Just sounds right. <laughs> Go on, what was the question? What would you rather do? Suck off your dad or let out your mum? <laughs> wow. 
Yes, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's one of Wittgenstein's theorems. <laughs> um, you'd sock off his mum. <laughs> He's done you. He has done you. I, I, I'm not from Perth, so I may never have to make that decision. <laughs> Fucking hell. You sound like you come from a very broken home. <laughs> I'm not suggesting you fucked your mum, but only because you wouldn't want to two-time your sister. <laughs> Why do I laugh like a sexual predator? I like the way that a sexual predator sounds better in your accent than any other. A sexual predator. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I laugh like that. It's one of life's mysteries, in the same way as why you dressed as a gay lumberjack. <laughs> we, we may never know. I like big, thick logs. Hmm. Yeah. How big's my cock? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not sure whether your mother would be comfortable discussing it, but it's... <laughs> Truth be told, it's quite small, but it smells like a big one. <laughs> what, sorry? Where's the weirdest place I've had sex? His mum's bum. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> I'm joking, of course, it was his dad's. <laughs> Any other questions, thoughts? Why do I look like Hitler? Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Sorry? Who? <laughs> what hotel? <laughs> ah, well, it's quite a posh one, so it'll have to be your place. <laughs> I don't think... I don't think they'll, they'll let you in. They've got a policy on that sort of thing. <laughs> and even though I'm not paying you, it looks like I am. <laughs> yeah, Where's go on. Where's your best audience? What, sorry? Where's your best audience? What's the best audience? Well, without being um, sort of, you know, sycophantic, sir, without sucking up to you, <laughs> he said in a very patronising manner. <laughs> uh, Glasgow's pretty good. I mean, that's why I'm recording the DVD here. But I don't know if you notice the cameras, but it's... <laughs> it's... Uh, It's just a fun place. I'll tell, I'll tell you a quick story about Glasgow, just before, before we move on. I'll tell you the reason I'm recording the DVD here. The first time I ever came to Glasgow to play at the Stand Comedy Club, I got on the back of a taxi, yeah? And I said to the book, because I wanted to make a reference to where was rough in town. So I said, excuse me, driver, where's rough in Glasgow? And he said, for you, everywhere. And then I was on stage later that night, yeah, on stage, and I told that story on stage, and all I said was, and I thought this was a comment that was beyond any kind of argument, all I said was, Glasgow is quite an aggressive town. And a guy down the front went, No, it fucking isn't it! <laughs> no hint of irony, No, it fucking isn't it! <laughs> <laughs> I thought this place will do for me! <laughs> Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr. Thanks for taking a break from the pornography to watch my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Now, back to jerking off.